want an exposure to a market or an asset. Everything they need in one place. We're the world's foremost authority on individuals, advisors and institutions. Hi everyone. I'm Valerio Baselli, for editor for Morningstar Italy. I'm in Vienna at the Morningstar Investment and Conference Europe. I have the pleasure to be with Edward Hugh, a macroeconomist and blogger. Uh, Mr. Hugh, thanks for being here. Nice to be with you. You just gave a really interesting presentation uh, about the aging population effects on the economy. Uh, why such a subject is so important, especially here in Europe? Well, firstly, because European populations are aging. You know, some are aging more quickly than others. Those who have had the lowest fertility for the longest periods of time, like some of the countries in southern Europe, are aging the most and uh, the most rapidly. But I mean, this affects our economies in a, in a number of ways. In particular, it affects uh, our, the levels of economic growth we can expect to achieve as growth in the labour force comes to an end. It affects the level of the pension systems we can expect to have and expects, affects the quality of uh, health services that we can expect to pay for because the demand on those services is obviously going to go up as we have more and more old people. So given that aging population trend, do you think that the status quo is sustainable? And with status quo, I mean, as you said, the pension system and the welfare in general. No, clearly it isn't. Clearly, we, de we designed a system that, that was built not to work in the longer term. Uh, that, that really, I don't know why, but sometimes, uh, it's like in football, you know. I mean, I, I come from uh, Barcelona and uh, we, we just had a very interesting uh, match with Milan, but sometimes uh, the defenders uh, don't see the, the attacking player coming because they're looking at the ball. And too many uh, politicians and policymakers were maybe looking at the ball uh, uh, of economic growth and the well-being and the, the, the good years without thinking of what could come next. And, and, and now we're entering the more difficult years. I mean, this is, I think it's worth emphasizing, this is the first time in the human history, the whole history of our species, that we're going to have these kind of population dependency ratios. So we are really entering the unknown. And what we've got with, from before has not been built made to measure for what we're going to have coming. And do you think that the people are ready to lose this kind of services? Uh, for example, the Italian election results uh, is a really strong sign that the people don't want any more austerity programs. Don't you think that? Yes, I think absolutely. I mean, I live in Spain. Uh, I, I would say the situation is absolutely the same in Spain as it is in Italy. There's a very low level of confidence uh, in, in the ability of politicians to manage situations and there's a great deal of uh, doubt and concern and what people s simply they don't understand um, what the problem is or why it's happening because there's nothing in their lives that really pre prepared them for the situation so they really think the answer is to spend money and they look at the United States and they look at Japan mm -hmm. and they say why can't we be like Japan without thinking that maybe Japan won't work and eventually the last question if the population is getting older, and this is a tremendous effect on our economy and on our lifestyles, what is the solution? Well, the, the problem is, as you frame the question, there isn't a solution. But what do I mean by that? I mean, that basically we lived in a society where we, we, or we've grown up in a world, all of us, where we thought, you know, there were instant solutions to every kind of problem, you know? Now, maybe people of my age, uh, with the experiences we've had in life, about our own personal situations or, or whatever it can be, find that the way we look at problems and look at solutions is different from the way your generation will, will be looking at them. Yes. In other words, we find a different way of approaching problems, that we don't think of the whole picture all at once and try to solve it. We take part of the problem and work on it and try to advance. And then we take another part of the problem and work on it and try to, or at least I think that's a good, you know, a good recipe. So part of the solution to this problem is learning to recognize the problem exists. Once we recognize it, as Socrates said, you know, uh, knowing you don't know is already knowing something. <laughs> yes. And I think that's the way to go forward here and, 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 and to go improvising and, 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 and developing, you know, measures maybe on a piecemeal basis over time, but always seeking to improve the situation, but with a very realist uh, perspective on what the problem is. Well, Mr. Hugh, thanks for sharing uh, with us your thoughts and uh, see you soon.
you're welcome.